Yeah. And I think a lot of people assume that if the person who was supposed to inherit dies, then you go back to the instrument and it goes to the next person. But that's not true if at the point that they die, the inheritance is theirs legally outright, even though it hasn't yet been given to them. Right. If as a matter of law, it belongs to them, the instrument is not any longer controlling, then we're looking at the deceased beneficiary's estate plan or lack thereof. Welcome to Absolute Trust Talk with your host, Kirsten Howe. Absolute Trust Talk brings you tips, tools, advice, and interviews to help you build a reliable knowledge base on estate planning, business, and finance to start preparing for your future today. Madison, we just finished a probate that we've been working on for quite some time. How long did we have that in the office? I would say at least two years. Yeah, yeah. two years. Okay, so if you listen to this show at all, <laughs> you know that there's a way to avoid probate. There, there's a very easy way to avoid probate is by doing an estate plan. So that two years doesn't have to be your future, but there is a process that happens after someone dies. Every time, no matter what, if the deceased person owned any assets at all, even if it was just a car and a bank account, there is a legal process and it takes time. You, you know, it's not like you wave a magic wand and it's done. It takes time. And if you've ever been a trustee or an executor, you know, it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. It takes, a long, it takes longer than you think it will. Yeah. And then in but, this case, the one that we just had for two years, that was a probate and a trust. That's true. So that's true. it's, you know, that's yeah. not always perfect. Right. And we are advocates of doing estate planning, setting up trusts to make things simple, make it cheaper, make it take less time. But even if it's a trust. Yeah. Even if it's a trust, depending on the assets and the family, of course, because discord always throws a wrinkle, it can still take at least six months, which is really good. Or, you know, two years, which is <laughs> typical probate, which is not unheard of. And they yeah. can go, you know, all of that can always go longer. Right. Yeah, a six-month trust administration would be quite welcome. <laughs> yeah, yes, it would. And maybe even almost miraculous. Anyway, welcome, everyone. This is Absolute Trust Talk, our live stream podcast here at Absolute Trust Council. I'm Kirsten Howe. I'm here with Madison Gunn. And today we are going to talk about what happens if a trustee, an executor, or a beneficiary passes away during this administration period, which could be quite a long time. So it's not not impossible to imagine that that could happen. And we have had that happen in our practice numerous times. So we're going to talk about that. And one of the reasons that prompted me to think, well, maybe this would be a good topic is there's a recent well-known example of that here in the Bay Area. For those of you who are listening in the Bay Area, our Senator Diane Feinstein famously was involved in a trust administration. She and her husband had a trust. She died before the administration was complete. So that's an example of what, you know, a beneficiary died in the middle of a trust administration. What happens then? Okay, so we're going to start with what happens if a beneficiary dies, because it's two different things, the beneficiary as opposed to the trustee or executor. When a beneficiary dies, before the administration is complete, and I'm talking, it could be either a probate or a trust administration, what happens? Yeah. So and I, I think we should point out that let's pretend this is like a single person that died and left their assets, because if you're married, it, they could be the beneficiary and the trustee, the surviving spouse. So that's an extra, yeah, that's, that's like a, a fine very, sign wrinkle also. So. Yeah, that, that um, is a very good point. Um, yeah. When you have a spouse who survives you, this conversation goes very differently. Yeah. So we're talking about an unmarried person has died and now a beneficiary their beneficiary dies. Died. So it's my favorite answer. It depends. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the favorite lawyer answer, right? The favorite lawyer um, Yeah. So it's going to depend what's going to happen. It's going to typically depend on the instrument, whether it's a trust or a will, or if they die in testate. Yeah. So typically, if you die after, if the beneficiary dies after the person who's leaving them an inheritance, there's usually a survivorship provision in the documents. You have to survive them by X number of days, 30 days, whatever it says, or whatever the law says. 
So if you survive that much, then the deceased beneficiaries, their estate is going to control. So whatever that looks like. (laughs) And so if somebody dies in test state without a will or a trust, there is no survivorship provision. You just have to prove that you survived. Yeah. It's like, you know, the next day or whatever. It's not like there's not a minimum number of days. It just has to be just the show that you survived. Yeah. That there was a car accident. They died on the road. You died later in the hospital. Yeah. Good. Okay. Maybe we're being too glib about it. Okay. So that's if there is an instrument that tells us there's a survivorship provision. What if this instrument, whether it's a will or a trust, says the inheritance is going to be held in trust for this beneficiary who has now died. Yeah, so it'll still depend on what that provision says. If it's going to be in trust for their lifetime, then it'll say what happens when they die, where it goes, whether it's to their children or to another beneficiary, that it'll, the trust or will document will say that. If it's going to be in trust until they're a certain age and they had already reached that age, then it might be a little bit different. Sometimes, you know, it'll say in trust for my kids until they're 25, and then you don't update it, right? Because you don't need to if you're okay with it going outright after that. So then we treat it, you know, as an outright inheritance. But so the trust document or will will say what happens if that person dies and their money is supposed to still be in trust with the leftover trust money, where it goes. Yeah, and I think a lot of people assume that if the person who was supposed to inherit dies, then you go back to the instrument and it goes to the next person. But that's not true if at the point that they die, the inheritance is theirs legally outright, even though it hasn't yet been given to them. Right. If as a matter of law, it belongs to them, the instrument is not any longer controlling, then we're looking at the deceased beneficiary's estate plan or lack thereof. Yeah. And that comes into play a lot when people are worried about in-laws inheriting. Because typically spouses don't inherit, but in this case, it's possible if it's their estate plan. They leave everything to their spouse. Yeah. So they're they're all considerations. That is a very, very good point. That is a very good point. So you might think about increasing that survivorship period. I don't know if that's going to solve much. Just hold it in trust. If you don't want an in-law to get it, hold it in trust, and then they won't get it. So, And that's a, you know, those are just all... All of these things that we talk about with after death can all typically, I mean, other than personality differences, can be taken care of or mitigated at, as best as possible by updating your estate plan right. to, to, con- to confront these issues that you're worried about. Right. And I'm just going to, I think it's kind of fun to talk about some of the examples that we've seen where somebody died in the middle of the process. This was quite a few years ago in medicine. I'm pretty sure it was before your time with Absolute Trust Council, I think you were on the planet, you were alive, (laughs) I think you were not working with us. We had a client who both of her parents had died many years ago, and she needed to do a probate to get their property legally titled in her name. One of the assets was a piece of real estate. So I don't remember the order. Let's say the mother had died and then the father died. So we had to start a probate of the father's estate in order to do a spousal property petition of the mother's estate. And then our client died before we finished any of that stuff. So then her child had to step in and start the whole thing again. So there could be, you know, multiple (laughs) probates stuck together. We have one now that's doing that. That I mean, it's the exact same thing. We have a beneficiary who the decedent died. He set up a trust, but he was, you know, convalescing when he did it and wasn't able to fund it other than the property that we took care of. So every other asset's not in his trust. So we have to file a probate. But he was predeceased by his wife by a couple of years and a child by about five to 10 years. And they all had assets in their name. So we have to probate the child, then the wife, and the our clients. What they initially set up was the initial probate. So there's going to be a triple probate there, right? Right. As well, it just gets. I'm our poor client. You know, is so overwhelmed. 
Yeah, it's a lot. It, it's a lot for them to keep straight. And uh, so I don't, that's our record. We in our office have never done more than a triple probate <laughs> as far as yeah. I can recall. Just, yeah. So um, keep it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we hope to, but we can't control what walks in the door. We just have to do what we have to do to yeah. help our, our clients. And in the Feinstein example, I'm not sure this is, this isn't as interesting or exciting. They had a joint trust. The trust specified that it gets divided into various sub trusts. And that still has to happen, even though she as a beneficiary has died, that, that dividing it up still has to happen and, and it will presumably. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we want to say about death of a beneficiary in the middle of a process? No. I mean, we've got quite a few going on where, you know, we have a trust administration that's going to pay to two probates because two beneficiaries died after the parent. So, you know, it's always fun when more lawyers get involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, right. So it doesn't we are, make things yeah. any less expensive, that's for sure. Uh, so, we try and make things as smooth as possible, but we don't have control over all of that. Yeah. So that, yeah, that one is, a, a, you remind me, that's a good example. There was a trust and it says these people get it, but two of those people subsequently died and have to do a probate there. So our client trustee has to distribute the inheritance to a probate executor or yeah. administrator. Yeah. So even though you do a trust so that there's not any court oversight, you might end up with it anyway. Exactly. Even if everybody gets along. Right. Right. Just yeah. because you can't control what people do or don't do as far as estate planning goes down the line. In theory, you can't control. I don't know. Maybe you can. <laughs> okay. So now let's move over to the other side and talk about what happens if a trustee or an executor dies in the middle of an administration. Right. This um, is more complicated. So if anyone yeah, thought yeah. that was complicated when a beneficiary dies, this is more complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because more, more eyes are looking at it. More people care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's start. The, I mean, the first step always is read the, read the document. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does the will say? What does the trust say? Does it name an alternate if something happens to the first one? Or, you know, sometimes people decline to act. So you always have different try and have different options in there. Right. Yeah. So good planning, you're going to name at least one successor trustee in case that trustee doesn't want to do it or can't for whatever reason. And this is a reason why they can't because they died. So you've got first step, read the document. If it's a trust that doesn't name an alternate. Yeah. Um, then there's probably going to be a procedure for how to name a, another trustee, whether it's the a majority of the adult beneficiaries get to a point, or sometimes it'll say that some other person can appoint a trustee or a fiduciary. It might have a specific, either very specific or a general procedure for that. Sometimes yeah. it just says you have to petition the court. Right. Or if it doesn't say anything, then you have yeah. to petition the court. Yeah. Yeah. So we would file a petition saying, Your Honor, you know, we have this trust. Our trustee has died and there's no other person yeah. you need somebody to. has to step up to do it and somebody has to be well yeah <laughs> the judge is not just going to pick somebody <laughs> yeah yeah so sometimes we have to go to court because of that and we have had to do that okay now if it's a will mm -hmm. so if it's a will we're talking about a probate is the administration that we're involved in right so the will will typically name an alternate executor which is fine that's great there's somebody else named the problem is with a probate, you essentially have to start over every time this happens. You have to file a brand new. There's not like a petition you can file that just says we want to switch the executor out. You have to file a brand new probate petition each time. Right. Because the executor has to, for one thing, they have to, there's documentation they have to submit that basically says, you know, I understand what my job is. I know I'm not supposed to steal money. I know I'm supposed to do all these things. There are hoops the the person who wants to be the executor has to jump through, and the court's going to make this person do that too. Yeah, and sometimes they have to have a bond, which is very personal, you know, in order just to like a surety bond in case money goes missing or anything like that. Right, right. But you can't just transfer that, you know. It's like you transfer a credit card from one person to another. That doesn't work. 
Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah, that yeah. is a good point. If this probate executor was serving with a bond, that's the new one has to go get their own bond. They don't yeah. just get to yeah assume the other one. Okay. So if it's intestacy, there's no will, um, yeah. and we're in a probate, and our administrator dies. Yep. Then it's a brand new probate petition, just like if there was a will. Only rather than having a will that names the second person, it has to be, you know, fall in line with the who has standing to petition the court. So or or they nominate somebody, whoever that is, you know, the fit, closest family usually is the right, right. There's a uh, hierarchy of yeah. who gets to be the executor or administrator if they want to be when there's not a document that says who is chosen. So we have to go through that statute and figure out whose consent do we need to get right. <laughs> in order to move on. Okay. And I just want to point out that we're talking about moving assets of the deceased person to the living that are subject to a trust or to probate. All of this conversation has nothing to do with assets that go by themselves, like an IRA. You know, with an IRA, you designate a beneficiary. If that person dies after you have died, if they then later die, all of this conversation has nothing to do with what I just said. Or right. we said. Um, there might be additional probates, but it's not going to be yeah. for this the person we're worried about. Right. But I guess that that's a valid point, is if it's an asset that's passing by a beneficiary designation, there is you don't go back and look at who's on line number two. Right. Who's the alternate beneficiary? It no longer applies. Once the person dies, it belongs to the people on line number one. Right. And then you're at the mercy of the custodian for that IRA. And sometimes they have their own procedure and it would go to that person's spouse or next of kin or the person who died after the original owner. But the majority of the time, retirement accounts have to go through probate if there's not an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Which they, is not the best because they get liquidated and you don't get those benefits. Yeah, it costs a lot in taxes when that happens to an IRA. So that is very unfortunate. If um, anybody so is it, in, inheriting an IRA, be quick about that paperwork. Jump on it. Get, get that transferred into your own name so that you can designate a new beneficiary. Okay, I'm going to, Madison, anything else you want to say about any of this? Otherwise, I'm going to go look at audience questions. No, I mean, I think the takeaway is to, for a beneficiary that might die either before you or after you, you can be as clear as you'd like to be in your estate planning document. So that's always something good to revisit if that hadn't been thought of prior. And to make sure you have a few people listed as successor trustees or executors. My favorite is to have someone that's going to name a fiduciary later. That's my favorite because it's, mm -hmm. you know, most people pick like their siblings and that's the same generation as you. So I think it's also important to point out that they may not die, but they might be incapacitated or not have the best. And that is one of the ones we did have where we had a client take on a trust administration and a subsequent probate because there were some government assets that we could not get without a probate that she didn't have the bandwidth to do it, but she really wanted to do it. And so we offered and offered and offered and, uh, you know, to have a fiduciary do it. And she took it on and then she passed away. And, you know, now we have a fiduciary in there. Now we have the fiduciary. But we yeah. had to file two probates and, you know, basically update a whole trust administration. And there's like 30 people to notice. And, you know, it's just at some point things get depleted, you know. So right. it's just a, right. a matter of making sure that everything is, you know, all the ducks are in a row in your document. Or having the ability to appoint, and you could even change the ability to at what point people cannot serve anymore in your documents. So, you know, mm -hmm. if, that, if there's any concern about that, you know, you can yeah. update that. Yeah, I think your point is a very important one and one that a lot of people don't think about is that maybe you only have two people that you can think of in your head as good trustees, but you might have somebody in your life that they wouldn't be a good trustee, but you trust them to pick somebody to be a trustee. Yeah. So that's a like a just in case. Well, if we run through all the trustees, this person will hire somebody. 
Yeah, because the other just in case usually is petitioning the court. So, yeah. and then you don't have control over who gets to pick that person. It's just whoever wants to. And sometimes yeah. that is a you know nefarious girlfriend or boyfriend of a beneficiary. You don't necessarily you know right. you want to make sure maybe that it's a licensed fiduciary or a corporate fiduciary or mm-hmm. bank or you know right. something of that nature. Yeah, at least that's somebody who can somehow be vetted a little yeah. bit. Okay. All right. So audience questions. What if the beneficiary who dies was the only trustee named in the document and the only beneficiary? When did they die? Before or after? Well, I think <laughs> assuming after, because in this context. So I yeah. think and that's just a combination of the two halves of our discussion. Yeah. Um, so the, if they died after, then the beneficiary is going to depend on who the new beneficiary is going to depend on if the document didn't name an alternate, if it was silent, then typically it's that beneficiary's heirs. So it'll depend on what their estate plan says. And then, or if no estate plan, the intestacy laws. Right. And then typically they, those beneficiaries would then nominate someone to be the trustee. Right. Or go to the court, whatever. The whatever is, yeah. is required given the situation. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think... Is there, this is a good question. Is there any planning that can be done to avoid probate if a beneficiary dies before receiving their inheritance? So the beneficiary, the, somebody's died, I'm the beneficiary. What can I do, if anything, to make sure that there's not going to be a probate if I die before this money is transferred over to me? Yeah, you can have a, a estate plan set up with a good uh, general assignment of any future interests that you might receive. Typically, you know, we have, you fund your trust and then anything that you acquire in the future, you acquire in the name of the trust, but you also sign an assignment that transfers like your personal property. But if that says any future assets, it would help cover that. Still might have to go to, maybe have to go to court, but it won't be a full probate um, in order to get that into your, to your estate. So it might be that if you know that you, you know, you know, you're going to inherit something you because a person has died and, you know, you're getting it, but, you know, it's going to take six months or so. Go talk to your estate planning attorney and see what they can. You could be more specific. You can say if you know there's a probate dragging out, you can say this probate case number, you know, I'm going to inherit. I assign all my interest to my My trust, the Madison gun trust, whatever. You can be very specific about it, especially if you're sick or you have any type of condition that you are worried about, you know, or are traveling. That's a lot. That's always what we get to, right? I'm leaving the country. I want to you know, get my estate plan up to Make sure everything's up to date. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's good advice. That is something that you can do. We usually don't hear from our clients until after they've received the inheritance. So they, they lived long enough and now they're saying, okay, I think I need to update or create my own estate plan but um, yeah you could always create an estate plan to sit there and wait for that inheritance to fall into exactly that is the typically the better option so you have that time and you're not you don't feel like you're scrambling and doing all the things at once good advice okay anything else madison you want to throw in there as good advice that was good advice yeah Yeah. no i think that i think that covers it it's always a lot of information because it's you know We do it on a daily basis and it's complicated for us because the the after death portion, trust administrations, probates, it's never linear. It's not ABC. There are steps that are linear, but it doesn't go that way because there's just too much involved. So just know that if you've ever been a trustee or an executor, it's just as confusing for everybody else as it is for you. So, (laughs) um, you know. We're all in it together. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And and we are here to help. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you learned something today and maybe had a little bit of fun like we did. And we will look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources, 
including our eBooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show. But if not, don't worry. You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at absolutetrustcouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon. This podcast is not meant to take place of legal advice from an attorney and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you do have a legal question or issue, please consult with an attorney.